Come on in the studio and learn my secret for revealing hidden color. I'm going to be using some Romanian pastels made by the J. Luda Pastel Company. And I will teach you my easy technique for creating color excitement, even when a photo is a little dull with color. And I'm going to do my same trick with alcohol, like my last video. You guys loved that video. Thank you so much. And I think you will benefit from my strategies and tricks I'll teach you no matter what level of artist you are. Are you ready? Here we go. Hello artist, welcome to Monet Cafe Studio. Pardon my casual attire, but sometimes it's just fun to paint in your big t-shirt, chilling out, listening to some music. I'm glad you're here with me today. I'm getting to something that I have been wanting to do for a long time with a lot of little interruptions. I have been working with the J. Luda Pastel Company. They've been kind enough to give me some selections of their pastels. And for months now, we have been working on me curating a Monet Cafe set. And so I have not yet had time to play with them as much as I would like in order to choose the pastels. So these are some of the J. Luda pastels that I'm going to be using to create a beautiful marsh scene. This month's theme is Marsh Madness. So come on in the studio with me while we play with these pastels. They're gorgeous. They're luscious. The colors are amazing. And I think you're going to love them. I found an absolutely beautiful kind of misty, foggy marsh scene from unsplash.com. And I was intrigued with this color palette. It was rather neutral with a subtle analogous palette. But I could instantly see that there were some colors in this reference image that I could really accentuate. And I'm going to pop this over in Photoshop and show you kind of how I do that. Again, this is a beautiful photo and I like it as is. I love this almost monochromatic, maybe a little analogous color palette. Analogous is just when uh, you use colors that are kind of next to each other on the color wheel. So I see a little bit of cool greens, a little bit of blues, and little hints of maybe some pink in there too. So I want to show you with the use of Photoshop, kind of how I mentally um, stretch color or exaggerate color. And like the title of this video, how, how do you see colors that aren't there? And the way I look at it, they really are kind of there. I just push them up a little bit um, with vibrance or saturation. So I'm going to use a tool that's in Photoshop here. It's called a color picker. I don't, I'm moving my arrow here so you can see where it is on the screen. It's just a little eyedropper tool. And in Photoshop, it's on this bar to the left. Um, and the color picker is literally what it sounds like. It, if you click anywhere in this photo, it's going to show you what the color is over here on their little color um, gauge here. Without going into too much detail about this, you can pretty much see that the um, desaturated or grayscale colors are all on the left, dark at the bottom, light at the top. And as you move to the right, it gradually increases in saturation. Now let's use our color picker and I'm going to click on different areas within this reference image. And I want you to watch over here, our little color indicator as to where this little circle moves to and how the colors change. And uh, I think you'll kind of be surprised. If I click kind of up a little bit higher in the sky, right in this area here, watch what color it is. Wow, that's a lot warmer than you would think, right? And I'm actually seeing that there are some warmer tones kind of um, in the uh, upper and middle part of the sky here. If I come down a little lower, notice how the red got a little cooler and I would say pinker. Uh, there's more pink. And what is pink? Pink is a light value red. Okay. So let me just, let me click this. Um, and I'm going to go over here to my paintbrush and just show you that it is indeed pink. If I went up to it, yep. See, there's pink. Uh, let me undo that. And so there are pinks in the sky here. Now I'm gonna get the color picker again, and I am going to choose somewhere else in the reference image in the sky. I'm gonna come down a little further, closer to the tree line here. Let's see what happens. Wow, look at that. It's kind of a, a little bit of a lavender color. I'm gonna come down even further and click. 
Look at that. It got a little bit of a cyan or a turquoise color, right? Look how many colors are in that sky. Now notice um, every time I clicked it, the circle is way over here on the more grayed out version of that color. It's a more neutral color. That's what a neutral color is. And so that's why this, this scene feels very neutral and easy. It's not screaming with color by any means. Um, but we can still train our eyes to notice these subtleties of color and make them not quite so neutral. So we have that artistic license to be able to do those things. Now I'm going to click around a few different areas in this photo and uh, see if you can tell uh, where things go or what color it changes in the upper right corner there. I'm going to click down here underneath some of these trees on the left on this little thing of land. Look at that, there's some green down here. It's very subtle, hardly noticeable because it's very dark and it's still kind of neutral. And let me click this little body of land right here. I, what do you think it's gonna be? Let's do a little test. It's kind of a, another cyan turquoise, a little bit teal. And um, so that is a beautiful color as well. So if you ever want to take a reference image and what I call punch up the color, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Noticing the little subtle nuances of color and making them a bit more vibrant. So I'm going to go to my uh, vibrance adjuster and saturation and I'm just pulling the vibrancy up higher. Can you see how those colors just really came to life? And you can do the same thing with saturation. Now Photoshop isn't the only place you can do this. There are so many free photo editing apps that you can do this with. So look, I'm just taking that saturation up. Look how that photo just came to life because we just took what was neutral and we made it more highly saturated. So you can totally train your eyes to do this and get to where you don't even need a photo editing app at all. All right, now let's tackle this painting. And as I already shared, these gorgeous pastels are from Romania. That's actually where my daughter-in-law is from. My son met her on a mission trip and the rest is love story history. So these pastels are so luscious with color. I'll be talking about them more as I paint. The surface I chose is pastel matte. I chose to work on white for this painting because I wanted to do a technique I just did in my last video. And by the way, thank you guys. That video did quite well. You guys loved my alcohol application with soft pastels and so that's what I'm going to be doing with this painting as well but I have some special footage for my patrons only of some new things I discovered since this painting all right and here we go I love this pretty purple that's a little bit of a neutral purple I'm just kind of visually um, getting an idea of where some of these shapes are now I got to tell you something I love about J. Luda pastels their application is some of the smoothest um, of any pastel brand. And what I mean by smoothest, they're very soft. So there's a lot of very soft brands that I love, Terry Ludwig, um, just too many to mention. Um, but I should say it's consistent. When you put it on its side, you know how some pastels, they have bumps or uh, ridges and you don't get a really smooth stroke or even consistent stroke. That's a better uh, adjective to use. Um, and J. Luda pastels, it's like they're just manufactured to be so consistent on the sides and the edges. So what I'm doing here is I've gotten my tree shapes in. I'm getting just some ideas of where some of these land shapes come out. My trees obviously get smaller in the distance. And now I realized, remember in Photoshop how we were seeing some greens in there? So I got a really cool green and a cool green leans a little bit more towards blue. It's not like grass green or, or green that you think of with the sun shining on leaves. So that kept it very nice and cool. And oh, this pastel mat had a an imperfection in it. And I think it was my fault because it got bent when I was traveling with the pad. Um, so now I've just gradually gotten some of the um, the blues and a little bit of a minty kind of bluish green because values get lighter in the distance and they get cooler. So that's why my distant trees are cooler and lighter. Now I'm getting down some of this other pretty, a little bit brighter turquoise in the foreground. This color is 3D. That's another thing I like about 
um, the J. Luda pastels, they have the color number embossed right on the pastel. Now that does wear off, you know, if you're using the pastels, but when you first get them, if you want to make a little color guide, um, it's so easy to do with those color numbers uh, on right on the stick. And my patrons are going to get some color notes of mine. I'm going to try to give you some of the colors that I used. And I'll tell you how to become a patron of mine on my Patreon page a little later um, so you can get all the goodies too. And these colors serve as my underpainting. I'm going to do, like I mentioned, what I did in my last video, use 70% isopropyl alcohol. You can get it at any drugstore. Just a nice soft brush. Any brush will do. I wouldn't use one that's too coarse. And just a little jar to put the alcohol in. Now, remember when I said I'm going to have some extra footage for my patrons? The extra footage is going to share something I discovered. Uh, the last video where I used alcohol, I did not use the pastel matte surface. I used a surface called Fisher 400. And man, it, it really does work well with the alcohol. The pastel matte, you see how it's not painting as smoothly. Go back and watch my other video and you'll see what I mean. Um, the Fisher 400 just allowed the alcohol to really blend the pastels. Can you see how the strokes are still showing, especially in the water in the foreground? And I made it work because this is an underpainting, so it's really not that big a deal. The point of doing the alcohol wash is just to really get a nice base of color that's going to serve as what I like to do is have some, some colors peeking through the rest of the painting. And I knew that I was going to have a lot of lavenders, purples, some turquoise blues, and the, the pinks and the magentas uh, that I kind of pointed out in Photoshop. So that's why I wanted to get this cooler, a little bit more of the greens and the teal and turquoise colors underneath. And then later you'll see me add the magentas and lavenders and more blues. So again, it still worked on the pastel mat, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to kind of recreate this painting again, a little small version of it with the Fisher 400 and the J. Luda pastels. And I'm telling you those J. Luda pastels, they just blended like gorgeous paint when I put it on the Fisher 400. So you can see all I've done is get me in a little base with these nice cool colors, a little bit more green. And it does dry lighter. I put the blow dryer to it. You can see it lightened it up. And doesn't that already feel moody? So underpaintings are a great way to get started. You also cover up your surface. So it's not just all this white surface staring at you. So I didn't want to go too dark too soon. So I got the same um, J. Luda pastel. By the way, when I showed all of those J. Luda pastels before on my uh, tabletop, there were 12 at the beginning in their own little set that are called their darks. They have a dark set now. Um, this is another one of them. It's kind of a dark blue. And I have to thank them because they made this dark set per my recommendation. I was trying to choose some pastels for the Monet Cafe set. And I mentioned some of the darks weren't quite dark enough uh, for me anyway. And so they uh, worked with me and, and they created a dark set after we talked about that. So this is their darkest um, that I know of anyway. Um, and it's a nice, just dark kind of smoky color. And so it's where you want to really get your focal energy um, for some of these trees, the trees that are closer to you and that are get more of the focal attention. I'm still working with some of the imperfections uh, in that paper. I worked around it and uh, it ended up being okay. Now I have a little piece of chamois cloth here. Chamois, it's kind of spelt like that. I guess it's a French word. And what am I doing here? I'm taking some of those darker areas under the trees and creating the reflections. See how I'm just pulling straight down. You just pull them straight down. And it's amazing how just that little technique really gives the feel for reflections. Now here's another gorgeous, look at this bluish pretty color. This is kind of like that one I was pointing out um, same color family as that one distant tree when I said, oh my gosh, look at that blue. So I decided I want to get some of this blue in the water and I'm kind of uh, carving into some areas with it to do some color echoing. It's called, there's that, that's the area I was talking about behind that tree. And color echoing is where you um, incorporate some of the same colors throughout the painting. And I always find that it's easiest for me to do that while I still have it in my hand. So I just look for other places in the painting where I might see that 
that color that where I could use it and it creates things in harmony. Now this is a little bit lighter and it's a little bit warmer. It's kind of a minty green. And I have sped this up a bit. Um, you can always slow it down using the gear icon in um, you, on YouTube. It's the lower right hand of the video screen. There's a little gear and you can slow the video down. Um, but look at how pretty this pink is. Remember we had some pink in the sky and I know that it's going to be reflected in the water too. So I just went ahead and put it in the water and see how I'm kind of turning my pastel. I'm using the broad side. I would say the entire time I've used the broad side of the pastel and I'm just kind of turning it sometimes, um, depending on the subject matter to fit it in between areas. Sometimes I'll have it horizontal and sometimes see how I just did that. Sometimes I'll have it vertical. And that's just so that I don't get that big wide part of the pastel everywhere. I'm kind of carving it into areas. Now I noticed in the reference image, a lot of times there's a lighter area above the tree line in the distance. It's usually a lighter value, but I was seeing this pretty blue above the horizon. And so I thought again, I'm just going to give it more vibrancy and more saturation. So I'm literally just doing the example that I showed you in Photoshop. I'm taking some of the colors that are already there and I'm just giving them more saturation or more vibrancy. And the trick with um, pastel painting, one, is keeping a light touch. Um, you don't have to fill up every part of this paper. That was a mistake I made early on. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get this. I got to press really hard. Um, I'm using this chamois cloth again here to soften the sky. Um, so keep a light touch because what happens is as you layer, things start to blend together. Now I did want the sky a little softer, so that's why I use the chamois cloth. I don't always though. Sometimes I don't use any tool to blend with. Um, but the layering is where the magic happens because if you keep a light touch, when you layer one color and then you lightly layer another color on top, they start to interact with each other. You're not totally covering it up um, because pastels are an opaque medium. They're not see-through. So you make them a little see-through by having a lighter touch. And then some of those colors will just peek through, interact with each other, sometimes even kind of vibrate with color. I love that. All right. So I did kind of uh, blend my, I, I would call this a second underpainting in a way, um, just to kind of soften some things up and give it that I wanted a misty, foggy feel. That was uh, kind of what I saw in the reference image. So that's why I did a little more blending than I often will do. All right, so now I've got my um, base ready to go and I'm gonna start adding some more of these greens. I didn't wanna go, remember, to the like warm green category because I didn't see really many of those uh, when we used the color picker. So I'm using this really pretty darker, teal green and I thought it was a great green for a scene that is um, uh, I would say a little less sunlight you see you don't see any sunlight here if there was a if it was a bright sunny day you'd get more of those warm greens but this is somewhere where the, the clouds have covered up the sun or it's just you know really far back and it's got obviously a cloudy or a foggy sky. So what's gonna happen is the greens in the tree, and it's darker too, um, the greens in the trees are going to be cooler. So I loved this green, isn't that pretty? And you'll notice that when I add some of these colors in the trees, I just pull a little bit of it down into the water. Now this one is a little bit warmer green, can you see that? But I thought it would be fun to add just a little bit of green that has some warmth, and I'm just adding it in areas where I'm gonna imagining that the sunlight, even though it's filtering through some clouds, would be coming from. And I just drag a little bit of it down into the water just to make that reflection feel a bit more believable and consistent. So it's just, you know, little light touches and carving. Notice we're not painting leaves, um, we're painting shapes. And it's really all you need because the brain can put together a lot from a little information. And I think you'll be able to see at this point, if you look at my reference image that I have in the lower right of the screen, can you see how my photo has a lot more color to it? I decided to accentuate some of those cooler greens. And you could take the same photo and, um, 
manipulate it color-wise to be various scenes with just a little bit of knowledge about color theory and how color works. I could turn this into a daytime scene with some bright, um, sunny uh, blue skies, and uh, I would add warmer greens, much bluer blues in the water and in the sky, and or you could turn it into a moody scene where it looks like the sun is setting and use a lot of warm uh, browns and golden colors and reds and oranges. So that's always a fun project to do that I've done that on the Monet Cafe channel and on my Patreon page. Uh, matter of fact, it was just a couple of months ago. The theme was called Variations on a Scene, where we did just that. We took a photo and we painted it in various different color palettes and different styles as well. Sometimes you can have marks that are a little bit more controlled and then sometimes you can get crazy and get all gestural. So, you know, you're the artist and it's always fun to just explore. And that's one of the suggestions I give so often when people say, how do I get out of an artistic rut? Well, you play like a kid again. You try something new or you do something small. Oh, that's a whole nother video I'll have to work on. Now, I'm just carving into some of those distant trees where you can see I just took some of the pastel that's the sky color, carved it into the trees. Uh, I put a little neutral in the sky too. I felt like some things were a little too saturated. So you'll see by the end of the painting, I kind of toned some things down um, because I do like a little bit of neutrality uh, in, in many, most of my paintings so that the colorful areas will really gain the attention. And now here on the Monet Cafe channel, I'm going to substantially speed up the rest of this painting and you can still see the progress and uh, learn a lot as well. But for my patrons on my Patreon page, you will get my commentary and the slower speeds for the duration of this painting and the extra content I was telling you about where I do this painting again on the Fisher 400. And you'll see how smoothly these J. Luda pastels behave with the alcohol. But don't go anywhere, Monet Cafe subscribers. You're gonna see the rest of this painting come to life before your eyes. And let me ask you a real quick favor before we continue. Would you go ahead and like this video, leave me a comment, and by all means subscribe. You can't know how much this really helps my video to get shared more by YouTube. Also, if you'd like that extra content and goodies I'm always talking about, you can become a patron on my Patreon page to receive that content. It's real easy. It's only $5 a month, and you become part of a family of artists all learning and growing together. And I love that I get to see your work. All right, let's finish this painting. I wanted to make sure to mention that I only used J. Luda pastels for this entire painting and for the second painting that I have on my Patreon page. I will have a link in the description of this video to the J. Luda company where you can order their pastels. And their site is jludacolors.com. These pastels are made in Romania. It's a father-son team that makes these pastels. And I'm telling you, they are so great to work with. Just lovely people. And even though they're in Romania, they ship, I think, almost everywhere for free. So that's really great. And also, if you use a coupon code they've given for my channel, SJ10, I'll have this in the description of the video, you get an extra 10% off. And very soon, they will be offering a set of pastels curated by little old me and some of my favorite colors from their pastel selections. I'll be sure to make a big old announcement when that happens. All right, you can see I've been adding more color to the water, also glazing some of the pastels over to make the water feel flat. And now I'm just adding a little bit of a lighter, this is like a little teal blue kind of color, very light, just to indicate some little breaks in the water. Often there are little breaks right next to the bank um, the marsh bank. I'll show you the final in a second, but I wanted to show you all of the pastels that I used from my J. Luda collection or selection that they've provided for me. And again, if you're a patron of mine, I give you the color notes with even the color numbers. And here is the final, and I think you can see it's quite different from the original photo with the neutral, uh, very subdued colors, and it has much more color excitement. So I really hope you learned a lot 
about how to identify and punch up those hidden colors. Now here's a quick little sneak peek at some of the footage that my patrons received. I was just curious how the J. Luda pastels would behave on a different surface rather than the pastel matte and how they would liquefy with the alcohol. And boy, was I happy that I did this little experiment. And this is Fisher 400 sanded pastel paper, the same paper that I used in my other video right before this one where I used the alcohol. And oh my goodness, these J. Luda pastels liquefied so beautifully with the alcohol on this surface. And here's the final of that little painting. I decided to give it more of a night moody scene. So see, you can take a photo and recreate it in many different ways and color palettes. All right, Monet Cafe family, I hope you learned a lot. You guys bless me so much. I feel like I've come to know many of you through your comments on these videos. As always, God bless and happy painting.